In PlasticNews.com, they report that according to a study that was done by the nonprofit organization Ocean Conservancy, plastic bags and food wrappers and containers are the second and the third most common items in marine debris. Around 100 billion petroleum-based plastic bags are used each year at checkout stands across the United States. And that requires about 12 million barrels of oil each year as well. Only 5% of those bags get recycled, and the rest end up in landfills, or worse, in the ocean. The Surf Rider Foundation is leading a campaign to ban the bag in order to protect our world's oceans, waves, and beaches, and as a bonus, to reduce the use of fossil fuels. Several cities have already taken such actions, such as um, San Francisco and Oakland. Now, Surf Riders Portland chapter has made this their top priority. Here in the open ocean, graceful dolphins glide beneath the surface in pursuit of fish, their primary food. These fish, in turn, feed on minute, prolific creatures called zooplankton. These days, zooplankton share the surface waters with increasing numbers of minute plastic particles, posing a problem since fish and birds are now consuming plastic in addition to plankton. Since petroleum-based plastics are non-biodegradable, any plastic entering the ocean remains there, continually breaking into ever smaller pieces until it becomes ingested or is deposited on some distant shore. Hi, my name is Charlie Plyvin. I'm the Oregon Field Coordinator for Surfrider Foundation. And I'm Trisha Ratliff from the Oregon Coast Aquarium. And today we are here at the South Jetty in South Beach, just south of Newport, and we're here to do a little demonstration beach cleanup project with some of the kids from the aquarium. So guys, are you ready to hit the beach and learn a little bit more about plastics and how plastics are impacting our beaches and our oceans? Yes, we are. All right, let's go. Surf Rider Foundation's a, a grassroots volunteer-based organization, and we work on ocean and coastal conservation. Uh, keeping our waters clean, uh, keeping our beaches protected, uh, protecting public access uh, for the shoreline. Uh, and so one of the big issues with our oceans is marine debris, uh, especially plastics. So um, our Portland chapter decided about a year and a half ago that they wanted to try and urge uh, the city of Portland to uh, pass a ban on single-use plastic bags. Because a lot of those bags end up in the watershed. Uh, some of them end up in the ocean as well. For a lot of our volunteers in Oregon, we do beach cleanups pretty regularly. One of the number one items that you'll see on the beach is plastics. And so, you know, it's a good feeling to go out and do a beach cleanup and, and pick up a bunch of plastic, but you feel like you're not addressing the root of the problem. Uh, and then you come back to Portland and you see just the amount of single-use plastics that are consumed some of that, of course, makes its way into the ocean. So I think for our Portland chapter, this was a, a great way of taking sort of a, a tangible issue, a bite-sized issue, and saying, you know, we can get behind this and we can get the city of Portland uh, to try and shift consumer behavior away from the single-use plastics. All right, thank you. <laughs> We're going to send this uh, to city council uh, this fall. Uh, we have about 4,000 folks so far that have signed on in support. And the idea of the ban is just getting people to, instead of using the single-use plastic bags, use reusable bags. The Central Pacific Gyre's gentle maelstrom accumulates debris from all over the Pacific and concentrates it in two enormous eddy systems east and west of the International Dateline. The expedition to the gyre was a, was a three-week uh, adventure. It took a week to get out there, a week to do work, and a week to get back. Now, our week out there was a full-time job. We're working sun up to sundown. We were trawling the ocean surface to find small bits of, of plastic. 
we were tracking down buoys. We would see like a plastic buoy or a plastic object in the ocean, and we'd all work together to go turn the boat around and go retrieve it. And here's a net right here that we found. The big ones can be up to five tons, massive nets that are all tangled up, full of rope and bits of netting. These nets, all those different kinds of rope, they're different kinds of plastic. I'm the education consultant for the Algalita Marine Research Foundation. I interact with teachers and students all the time. Prior to the Jara voyage, I would talk about the problem of plastics in the oceans but I hadn't really seen it myself until the expedition to the gyre. This is a good sample for chemical analysis. One paper that was written that said that there's over a million times more pollutants that's absorbed by the plastic than what's in the ambient seawater. But these plastic particles are magnets for those those pops, those persistent organic pollutants. As captain of the oceanographic research vessel Algita, I've traveled to many remote areas of the Pacific Ocean. And in my travels, I've been alarmed at the increase in the amount of trash. My sentiment was that the ocean is filling up with trash. To try to get a handle on the quantity of trash in the ocean, we trawled over 100 kilometers at random lengths and then came back to the lab and analyzed our samples. We compared the weight of the plastic pieces that we accumulated in these trawls to the weight of the zooplankton that we accumulated. And most people find it highly distressing to learn that for every six pounds of plastic that we got, there was only one pound of plankton. In other words, there's six times more plastic by weight in this area than there is naturally occurring plankton. However, the Central Pacific, being a gyre, does accumulate. The high concentrations we found are likely to be at their greatest in the center of the Central Pacific gyre. All right, guys, so what we're doing here is we're picking up um, a little bit of trash on the beach, but I want you guys to focus in a very small area. We're going to be looking at plastic and how it accumulates on the beach, and then we want to start to think about how it gets here. And one of the things that I really want you guys to look for, when you start to look at the sand, when you start to look at all the things that are on the beach, and you start to look really, really close, look for these little round balls, these tiny little round balls. I'm going to get one close up there. These are called nurdles. These are plastic nurdles, and this is pre-production plastic. What does that mean? It's not melted down yet. It's not melted down yet. It hasn't actually turned into a product yet. So we're finding plastic nurdles, stuff that is intended to be used as a product one day. We're starting to find these things on our beaches. Some Japanese scientists released a study indicating that plastic pellets, the manufactured way that uh, plastics are shipped to end-use manufacturers. Uh, these plastic pellets are accumulators of uh, hydrophobic uh, pollutants, things like DDE, PCB. These can be up to a million times more concentrated on the surface of these plastic pellets than they are in the ambient seawater based on this latest research. So we're looking at a situation in which uh, it's not innocent uh, confetti that's being spilled out in the ocean. It's a very effective biotoxin accumulator that's drifting around out there. Let's take a look. So we basically covered an area about this big. And you guys still see some plastic that we may not have picked up? Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you think of all this plastic that we picked up here today? It's, disgust it's disgusting. It's disgusting, huh? Yeah, it's just... So, let's just not think about it being disgusting, though. Let's, what's something that we can do? What's one thing, tell me one thing that you're going to do? Well, uh, recycle and also tell people about what it can do to like our beaches and our animals. It's a good indicator of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch and everything out there. Definitely.
I have a friend who doesn't recycle, and so I might try and convincing her parents to start recycling. That's a great start. Single-use plastics are ubiquitous, you know? I mean, really, we're, we're scratching the surface when you talk about the plastic grocery bag. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you to Sustainable Today. And remember, we are bringing you the tools to be sustainable today.